Did you know that the human eye and the camera have many similarities? Yes, it's true. But before we begin our journey into these similarities, let's take a quick look at the basics of digital cameras. Digital cameras, like all cameras before them, require light to work. Light tends to travel in a straight line, but it also bounces off objects, which is what allows us to photograph them. It is also what allows us to see them. When light hits an object, it bounces back in a straight line, but at the same angle with which it hit the object. The first camera ever created took advantage of this principle. It was a simple room with a hole in it. Light would pass through that hole and would be reflected on the other side, upside down. And in many ways, today's advanced digital cameras still employ the same principles. Digital cameras are equipped with sensors that sort of resemble solar panels. These sensors are divided into megapixels, millions of red, green, and blue pixels. These cameras are also equipped with computers that can read how much energy each pixel receives. This energy is created when light hits the pixels. The color of the pixels then allow the computer to estimate the shape and colors of each scene and create an image. But for this to happen, first light needs to hit the pixels, just like the light needs to hit objects so we can see them. Now that this process has been clarified, let's take a look at all the things eyes and cameras have in common. Let's begin with the eye's cornea. The cornea is a transparent curved structure that sits in the front of the eye. It works together with the lens, which is behind the iris, to focus light onto the retina. The cornea takes the diverging rays of light and bends them through the pupil, the round opening in the iris. It acts in a similar way to the camera lens, which sits in the front of the camera and is also curved. The curvature on both the cornea and the camera lens allow them a larger field of view to the right and left instead of just to the front. Next is the eye's iris. The iris is a membrane behind the cornea with a small hole called the pupil. It is the iris that people refer to as the eye color. Tiny muscles in the iris control the size of the pupil, making it smaller or bigger to allow less or more light in. This is exactly how the aperture functions on a camera, letting in more or less light to focus on different objects. When the iris is contracted, it covers all but a small part of the lens. This allows it to adjust the amount of light entering the eye, so the eye can work in a range of light conditions, from dim to bright. Behind the iris and the pupil is the lens that we have been talking about. My eyes! All right, all right. Next is the retina. This is a thin, light-sensitive membrane that covers the inside back of the eye. The retina is where images from the outside are brought into focus. It is covered with millions of microscopic photoreceptor cells called rods and cones. These are sensitive to light and dark, detail, color, shapes, and movement. These cells change the light rays into electrical impulses and send them along the optic nerve to the brain, where the image is perceived. This is equivalent to the sensor chip in a digital camera. The sensors collect all the information to form an image, but that's not where the similarities end. The eye and the camera are also similar in their abilities. Let's start with the ability to focus. Most people can focus on both objects close up and objects far away. This is accomplished when the muscles in your eyes change the shape of the lens. A camera can do the exact same thing by changing the distance between the lens and the film. Just like the eye and camera have similar abilities, they also have similar limitations. Both the eye and the camera have a limited scope of view. However, the camera can greatly enhance its field of view using different lenses. This is a quality the eye does not possess. In that way, we could argue that the eye is more limited than the camera. However, the reality is much more complex than that. Whereas a camera is controlled by the human hand, an eye functions instinctively all the time, adjusting to its environment to make sure that we always see clearly. When we move into a dark environment, our eyes automatically adjust their sensitivity the rods and cones contain light-sensitive chemicals called photopigments. 
When exposed to light, these pigments convert the light energy to electrical signals that our brains can interpret. In bright light, the pigment decomposes, reducing the eye's sensitivity to light. In dim light, the pigment regenerates, allowing the eye to adjust to the darkness. So while cameras may not be prone to nearsightedness or macular degeneration, they are also not as good at adapting as our eyes. In the end, the eye is a complex body organ that is responsible for vision. And in that sense, we can agree it cannot be compared to anything created by humans. <laughs> <laughs>